Hello everyone, I'm Cheslick44, also known as Fly, and welcome to this Let's Play of Queen's Wish 2, The Tormenta. Last episode, we went back to the Cronus Woods and cleared out the Ruska Pass. We've been given one more task, to go into their deepest grove, Terror Man. There is another grove that we are not to visit, but I don't know what it is. He didn't tell us. It would be nice if he told us so that we knew what grove to avoid. But, right now, well, we've got Iscale on one side and our other fort on the other. We may as well start by making our way towards the other fort. So, first we go back through the Ruska Pass. All paths are opened and the like. I have a feeling there's nobody in there. So, let's make our way towards our, other, towards our third fort. You emerge into the northern half of the Kranus Woods. It is at a higher altitude than the south, colder and windier. It is also more wild and less wealthy. As you get farther from the gentle coast, the population gets sparser and the buildings cruder. There are people here, though. You constantly hear traces of them. The sound of a broken branch, a brief glimpse of a face in the underbrush. As you travel, you are constantly being watched. The feeling of the woods only grows more oppressive. The groves here are also angry, and their power only grows greater. There is a band of Cronus warriors sitting by the fire. They patrol the roads, making sure that raiders and brigands are kept away from the main road. They watch you silently when you approach. Greet them. They make room for you around the fire. They share weak ale and a thick stew of game and forest mushrooms. They are grim and quiet in the typical row fashion. Eventually, one of them, the oldest one of them speaks. We know of you, Haven. We knew you would come upward. Is there anything you want to know? Any troubles lately? The groves are angry. This you know. The master of Iscale will tell you what you need to know. How are the woods? Uneven. Unpredictable. If you want to be safe, travel on the roads. Can you give me directions? He points to the northwest. The two settlements are there. Our city Iscale is on the east side of the river. Your refuge, Timberland Keep, is on the west. I'll be going now. You rise to leave. Most of the row stares silently into the fire. The leader rises and bows. We welcome you. Safe travels. Ruska Pass south, Iscale northwest, Timberland Camp northwest. Alright. A stiff breeze blows through the woods, chilling you to the bone. The leaves blow up and swirl around you, turning you around and blocking your vision. The tiny storm is soon quiet. When your visibility returns, however, you are confused. The forest seems different. Oh, okay, and now we're being at... Well, that was unexpected. I guess we're dealing with some uh, snakes here. Let's uh, try and get around them. That's a naga! That naga charmed me! This is bad! This is extremely bad. The Naga is the big one that has to die. Can only get those three. Well, go ahead. This is going to be a rough fight. Oh, dear. Oh yeah, we need to haste. We need to get some blessings on us. Thank you for that, at least. Okay, there goes one serpent. Yeah, get a battle frenzy on us. If we can get that Naga dead, that'll be great. Alright. Another fireball. The Naga's almost dead. That's good. Actually, no. Haven's Mercy. Our back line is badly wounded. Okay, good news. Naga's dead. 
Bad news, we still got these things to deal with. That great serpent is almost dead. And now it is. Alright, two more to deal with. Taking a lot more than I'd like to deal with, but we are dealing with it. One more. I'm glad we managed to avoid the other two groups. Jeez. Okay. Oh, this is a long route. Those, those snakes are following us. Good news is we got out. Okay, we gotta deal with these snakes. They're still going after us. Two swaying serpents and a bunch of spitting serpents. Not good. All right, charge in. Thank you for resisting the charm. You are going to charge in on that one. Okay, that kills that one. The other one's stunned, so we can survive a bit. Okay, I think we got this. You move there, and whirlwind. Good. Okay, we're going to get through this. This one isn't as bad as I thought it would be. There we go. Alright, one more spitting serpent to deal with. We got this. There we go. And a big healing for us. And we're fine. Okay. Timberland Keep North. We're going to the keep first. You are close to Timberland Keep, Haven's fortress and refuge in the northern Kronos woods. You aren't surprised to find that it has been neglected and starved of funds. It will take an effort to get it up to any sort of proper standard. There's a large camp to the south of the fort. Haven should have a decent force of soldiers there, ready to keep order at a moment's notice. There are indeed a few warriors, but they are old and slovenly. Bottom of the barrel. Haven's lack of concern for this region is obvious. Alright, take a look around the outside first, because that's how I do. Alright. Let's go into the fort. See how bad this is. You enter Timberland Keep, Haven's northern fortress in the Crownus Woods. You're not surprised to find the same lack of maintenance as elsewhere in the Rocage. It's as if the leaders here forgot that the Rocage could ever be dangerous. There are a few traders walking around town. Guards drill in the southern courtyard. Soldiers stand and salute as you pass. Still, there is a lack of energy. Or determination. The farther you get from the center of Haven, the less anyone cares. It may be necessary to rebuild this fort, if for no other reason than to answer the petitions of the Rossi and go home. 25 wood, 15 iron, 5 stone. We do not have much in the way of stone. That's just a guard tower. Okay, fair enough. Interesting that that's there. Okay. Ooh. Steel rapiers. We can sell those once we get the uh, blacksmith up and running. And we will. Okay, let's see. There's the west exit. Still got a lot of guards out here, at least. So there's that. At least we have a load of guards. Alright, round about this side. And the main hall is over here. Alright. There's an exhausted Havenite courier waiting in front of this hall. He has the customary bow, bow heavy satchel, and light armor. 
He also has a set of less usual, yes, less usual bandaged wounds and deep scratches. He wobbles up to you and bows. He needs rest and medical care, but he is a warrior of Haven. The job will get done first. Greetings, Prince. I am Messenger Anders. Are you all right? Getting here has been a challenge. The roads have raiders. The beasts in the woods are on the are on the hunt. Still, I've served here for years. I do not fear the rocage. I'm ready to present my message. Why have you sought me? He sways worryingly to the left for a moment, but then he regains his balance. Governor Yvette sent me. From Sillen, I mean. She has urgent news. What's the news? Governor Yvette wants you to know that Rasakam, leader of the Kronis, has been killed. Assassinated. You are not to worry. This happens all the time. You should still know, though. Rasa Khan? Oh boy. How is the Rasa killed? Poison, I heard. The row can be pretty sneaky when they have to. Am I given any new directions? Directions? From the governor? I... I don't think so. She can't really boss you around, can she? Since you're a prince and all. She might want to talk to you, but she didn't seem worried. Thank, me, thank you for this news. Dismissed, he bows again. Thank you, Prince. I'm going to our hall. I think I need a few stitches. Okay, Rasakam is dead. That's very worrying. He was the one who sent us in, which is a problem. We're going to need to investigate this very soon. For now, let's take a look at the fort. Of course, there's messages here. The mist in the mirror turns green and forms the shape of Delia's face. It is unnerving. Greetings, Prince of Haven. I have heard that you won a minor victory. You fought your way into the inner Cronus woods. Soon you will pacify that strange forest. I can feel it. I have quite a tale to tell you. And soon you will, as we sit by a fire in the palace and sip tea. I don't have time for a story now, though. Things are in chaos. Uh, don't worry, I will deal with it. These woods are getting dangerous. To the locals, perhaps. To one with your resources and training? It was only the random lashing about of wild magic. It has to be dealt with from time to time. I have received reports from the woods, and I have performed some analysis. And the results of your analysis? The main source of the problem in the Cronus woods is the corruption of their sacred woods. Easy enough. Explain how this makes things easy. Well, the problem is not us. The problem is the wild magic in their lands flails about randomly. Sometimes this is beneficial, sometimes not. When the magic becomes hostile, Haven has the resources to calm it again. This is a service we provide to our vassals. I know it must seem odd to you, but this is a standard problem. This is really a standard problem. I wish you would listen to your tutors more. Haven's empire is huge. There are 23 known enchanted woods. Each one of them, at some point, has gotten angry. Then our warriors and sages calmed them. This really is easy. Go to a few of their sacred groves and purge the angry magic. Declare victory, approve their governor with vague promises of improvement. Haven is their hero once again. Problem solved. Are killer trees really so common a problem? Not common, I would say. Heavy concentrations of wild magic attack on average every 20 years or so. Of course, it is possible that Governor Yvette's excess logging triggered this incident, which is why we will deal with her. In the future. But what about their corrupt governor? Triage, my brother. Solve the most urgent problems first. The corruption of Governor Yvette is a negligible problem, and her family has a lot of wealth and influence. She will be solved at some point in the future. I, I think I need to do more than just clean up the groves. Rupert... The queen has made her wishes clear. Bring calm quickly. Do what you need to and leave the rest of the, to the diplomats. I will see you at home soon. The mist fades. We've got a bunch of me messages. The mirror is clouded with pale mist. This signifies that someone in Sharon's palace wants to speak with you. However, when you approach it, there is only silence. Hello? A long pause. Then you hear the queen's voice. Your mother sounds normal, mostly, but there is a distant, distracted quality to it. Hello, Rupert. I have been waiting for some time. It is good to hear your voice. It reminds me of your father. Greetings, mother. I have reclaimed a fifth fort in the Rocage. Did you? That is nice. 
Your father would have been proud to see you claim power in his homeland, far beyond what he imagined. Are you well? Of course. I am always well. Things are well. All is well. Now that you have seen much of the row, I wanted to tell you about your father. There is a long pause. You sit and wait, but she doesn't continue. Mother? Your father, Consort Darmor. Oh, what an infuriating young man. <laughs> she laughs, and for a moment she becomes... She sounds much younger. I met him after I became queen. I dropped by the Rukaj for some diplomacy. He brought me a list of demands, the way the Ras are challenging you now. It was so foolish, but... The heart chooses who it wants, and our hearts can be so foolish. I knew I wanted him. I made it happen. So much arguing, shouting, handing out favors to Haven's petty nobles. And then one day he was mine. Listen. He was my consort. I relied on him as I learned to rule. It was so difficult, mastering the nobles, controlling the vassals, all through three pregnancies. I couldn't have learned what I needed to without him. Now he is gone. But I am not without help. I have Sutter, Delia, and you to face what is ahead. Did he rule with you? Of course. He had no official power, not a scrap. He had my, my ear instead. He had my trust that gave him more power than a thousand nobles. And then he was gone, and... And... Another long silence. Mother? You hear voices, soft, reassuring, controlling, a whispered conversation. The mist fades. The audience is concluded. More messages. When you approach the mirror, it starts to hiss. Again, the surface fills with random flashes of light. This is what happened the first time Wolf talked to you. This time, the hissing is gentler and Wolf's voice becomes clear more quickly. Prince Rupert, you have returned. It is Wolf. We can continue talking. Events are moving quickly and I speak for the row. Our conversation was cut off last time. We are still working on mastering your mirrors. The last one shattered. We are getting better. Row, learn quickly. What do you want from me? Wolf's speech still comes out as an atonal hiss. You can't tell anything about who you might be talking to. It is not too late. The true challenge is still coming. War can be avoided. Justice can be done. I must ask you a question. You mentioned this challenge last time. Haven must be challenged. You claim to own us. You neglect us. It is unavoidable. But not here yet. I need to know who you are. You will know in time. Ask your question. Your father was Darmal. Your father, Darmal, was born of the Rokaj. You are half row. Our blood flows in your veins. You are part of us. Your, your governors ne neglect and abuse our people. Can you tolerate this? Doesn't your blood tell you to help us? Haven has not treated you justly. That is true. I am impressed that you realize it. Your family thinks you are a fool. You are not. You are wise. I must warn you, though. Warn me of what? The blood of the Rokaj flows in your veins, whether you feel it or not. If you abandon us, if you let us be enslaved and abused by Haven, then one day you will deeply regret your crime. I will remember what you, are, what you said. Leave your mind open. Perhaps we can convince you that it is best for Haven to leave the Rokaj. You will see that... You hear a cracking noise. Your mirror is intact, but the conversation is over. I see what this wolf is trying to do. The mirror fills up with angry red mist. As you brace for the worst, the wisps form into your mother's face. The queen is absolutely furious. Rupert, we will talk now! She is shouting. She almost never shouts. I have had more news from the Rokage. Did I do anything wrong? Not everything is about you, child. Mother, why are you so angry? Because everything is going wrong and none of you are fixing it. I need to bring order. I need it now. And I and now I hear this story from the Rokaj. 
Another of our loyal Rasas is dead. Yes, Rasa Kam of the Crownless Forest was assassinated. I knew Kam. He was our guide when our family visited the Rokage when you were very small. He was loyal. He looked out for our interests, tolerated our corrupt idiot governor. Amazingly, she manages to grow louder. And now he is dead. That is the second of our loyal assets we have lost. I was already furious when they dared to attack Sutter and you. Now, you listen amazed as she starts shouting obscenities. Do you think the assassinations will continue? Yes, or more raids, or a full rebellion. How dare they? Oh, we will make sure someone pays for this. Who do you think is responsible? The Rasa was poisoned, no doubt, by the guild Nas. Cowardly assassins. Haven will show them how to kill. Oh, yes, they are amateurs next to us. But they are just the tool. We don't know who gave the order. Yet. How should I proceed? There is a long silence. When she starts speaking, her fury is past. Instead, she sounds exhausted. You can barely hear her. Continue your work. Evaluate the governors. Hear the Rasa petitions. Report to General Miranda. Come home. We need to see him in... In control. We need more information. You can get us both. Then you will come home. And we will... We'll strike. Are you alright, Mother? I am fine. Just angry. All is well. All is well. I will find out who's responsible and get revenge. Anything you can learn is good, my child. You do not need to act. Don't risk more danger than necessary. We have people for that. Complete your mission. You wait for her to say more, but she doesn't. There is a long silence. Eventually, the mist clears. Nothing else. All right. Chief Gippius. A well-fed, serious older man rises from his desk to greet you. He is definitely the chief of Timberland Keep. His office is clean and full of little luxuries. The lack of care outside has not infected the, the chambers of the leaders. My prince, I am so honored. I am Chief Gippius, and this is Timberland Keep. It is a proud outpost on the very edge of our empire. Please, let me give my report. I'm sure you will be pleased with how things are going. I will take your report. I am pleased to report that things are going well. The province is peaceful, the rogue cooperate, taxes and tributes are being sent back home. Our vassal is functioning as well as can be expected. The Rasa gave me a petition to deal with their groves. Yes, an impertinent request, given how Prince Sutter and you were attacked. Still, we can provide you support. You can order smithies and such rebuilt, and we will provide beds to rest in and food for your journey. There are no disruptions. Well, yes, the groves of the Kronos have been uh, acting odd. They are too superstitious to deal with them properly, so they dump the task on us. Still, gardens need to be pruned from time to time. An annoying chore, but not a difficult one in the grand scheme of things. And now the Rasa of the Kronos is dead. True, and unfortunate. That Rasa was a docile and cooperative ally. Still, these Ro kill their leaders from time to time. It's just their savage way. Nothing to bother royalty with. As you speak with Chief Chippius, he offers you imported tea, stronger drink, and other luxuries of the Empire. No doubt he started stockpiling these treats the moment he heard you were coming. One thing is clear. He is capable of making dedicated efforts when given a reason. Tell me about this fort. Timberland Cave has been operating here for over a century. It was a brave bulwark against chaos in the Great Uprising. Now it has a simple job of looking over the minor province's affairs. We collect taxes and send out orders. I dare say, for all our rough edges, we have done everything the Queen asked of us. We know how to deal with the row. It is in poor condition. I respectfully disagree. It is exactly as well maintained as it needs to be for a docile and cooperative vassal to experience no distress. Oh dear, you came from, uh... From the governor in the east, didn't you? I will need more support for my mission. We are at your command. Our raw materials are at your disposal. You have but to speak and our facilities can be speedily built. We'll do anything we can do to help you complete your mission and go safely home. What is the best way to deal with the row? A firm hand, consistency, predictability, and force. 
sharp, brutal force if needed. That is the language this land speaks, has always spoken. After the great uprising, they learned to fear us. As long as they fear us, they won't worry over much about their groves and so on. How long have you served here? I received the honor of my posting here three years ago. Why were you selected? My niece is Governor Yvette. I helped raise her when she was young. This gave her ample opportunity to see my wisdom and skills. She was able to select me for the post with absolute certainty of competence. Of course, Yvette. Oh, this whole place needs to be redone. Okay. I met Counselor Abel and he told me about how Yvette is as governor. Hmm, yes. It was clear from early on that Abelin was malicious and treacherous. I warned the governor, but she is sometimes too kind and generous for her own good. And what is your response to his claims? Again, he is ambitious. He had the ear of a prince, and he used it. Yet this province is productive and peaceful. There are no grounds for his libellous claims at all. He is lucky that he is allowed to stay here at all. I need more supplies to rebuild this fort. I have given you everything I have at my disposal, yet I can see it isn't enough. Fortunately, we can draw from the Silver Chief Mine. It has provided materials to Haven for some time. Alas, the anger of the Groves has spread to this mine, and it has stopped production. They have offered me consideration for aid, but I have not yet been able to send forces to solve their problem. Perhaps you can help. It would make a good hunt. Where is this mine? It is to the northwest, buried deep under the mountains of the Rocage. An old claim, long productive. Very handy to have it near Timberland Keep. Who operates the mine? An old clan of the Karanis, close to Haven. They have long given consideration generous enough to honor us, and we look after them in return. They offered consideration. Well, of course. Sending soldiers of Haven is troublesome and expensive. If they want us to fight for them, they have to pay. It's only sensible. Oh, don't judge. So much of the wealth Governor Yvette sends to your mother comes from such considerations. Okay, then. Well, we have an area we'll need to go to. Anything else in here? John Tessimer. Tessimer. Timberland Keep has one staff member who actually tends to the fort. He's a burly young man in a leather jerkin. He sets his hammer by the forge and approaches to greet you. Oh, welcome, Prince. The chief told me that you were coming. It's an honor. I'm Johann Tesmer. What do you do here? I'm the quartermaster. Well, the chief takes care of that. I mainly work as a smith. My family sent me out here to serve Haven. I like the Kranis. Good place to serve. The chief says that we always need to be preparing. Oh, that reminds me. Offering. What are you preparing for? I... Oh, well, that's the chief's business. He watches the Kronos. He knows what they're up to. Maybe trade, maybe war. He'll tell me. What's the situation in the Kronos? Eh, seems pretty quiet, I think. Peaceful. I don't talk to the row a lot. You have an offering. Yes, you coming here is a rare honor. The chief was very excited. We made sure to have a gift for you, to help you remember. A gift, not a bribe. Johan is confused. A bribe? Why would I bribe you? I don't want anything. It's just... I thought gifts are what you give to a prince. The chief wanted to make sure you had one. And what should I remember? Well... I'm not exactly sure. The chief was in a hurry when he talked to me. Oh, wait. He wanted you to know that we're really prosperous here. Collect all sorts of taxes. I need no gift. All right. I knew that what might happen. Just as long as I offered... These people give so many bribes. I'll not take them. Alright. What have we got here? Consort Darmal. I think we've already read one of those. Let's see. I guess that's the room we'd be staying in. What's in these chests? Nothing and nothing. And in here... Oh, another ladder up. Nothing. Okay. Well... I think I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. Uh, seems like the right place to pause, as next episode we'll repair up the fort, put it all together, get more things built up, because I'd very much like them, and, uh, 
Then do a little looking around, including whoever replaced the Rasta. Things are going poorly, and I'm very worried. I like that Rasta. He was willing to work with us. But I worry. But that'll be in the next episode. So until then, I am Chester44, also known as Fly. That is Rupert, Elspeth, Terrence, and Patricia. This has been a Let's Play of Queen's Wish 2, The Tormentor. And I shall see you all next time.